to Crater Lake number six. As you can see, the layout was going to have a full loop at the back here, but I've decided to chop off the one end at the very end uh, and the other one into a sort of siding at the on the left hand side. The reason for this is when we put the bicycles on, uh, it blocked any clearance, so it was too hard to go under it or over it. So I've just terminated the trains uh, just behind the scenes uh, and people will be able to see what happens. Right, so it was a matter of just cutting out some more foam to make some angle bracings. Uh, and this is the beauty of working with this uh, material. You just get the foam cutter out, cut what you need, and away you go. And it is structurally si sound, but even so, uh, even though it's glued, I still like to put some fi fixing in um, and screw some bolts in just to make it all secure. The thing is, you don't want this falling apart in transit on a... Uh, on a trailer on a four I couldn't sometimes it's up to four hours in the trailer bouncing around so I've tried to make this as rigid as I can at this stage because then it still has to be attached uh, to the actual layout in its upright position those of you that have known me for a while now know that I'm not the master modeler uh, I make things how I see they should be made and if there's an easy way of doing something, I'll do it. I can't carve rock faces. I'm not a, an artist. My easy way is the old brown paper. Make it to, to fit the size we want and then just scrunch it up. It's quite funny. People say, oh, why do you send your stuff, if you've ever bought stuff through me, uh, in brown paper? Because I had this huge roll fell off the back of a truck 30 years ago. Been sitting in the garage and now I can use it. So basic sort of modelling uh, here, you just scrunch it up, no finesse, get an idea of how long it has to be, keep scrunching until you're sort of happy, and then it's a matter of gluing it on. Uh, it's a case of what seems to be right is right, because there's no wrong. <laughs> Okay, so the next step is getting the PVA glue out, paper glue, and making up a, a little bit of a mixture, and just putting it on, giving a good coverage, because this is going to be the base that we're going to be working on, and then just putting the paper on. Now, at this point, you've got a bit of flexibility if you want to have deep ridges or little pockets of things well this is the time to be doing it what I wanted with my road was to have a bit of a ledge up the top so once again just scrunch up another piece of brown paper glue it on I, I used some pins which I don't think it was obvious but I pinned it on as well just to try and keep the form and this is becoming the basis for which we can then put the plaster overlay so there we have it already and see the yellow heads for the pins there once it's dried you just pull them out so after all that it's uh, outside for the messy bit and getting the plaster bandage now i used this echo mod wrap plaster from eckersley's uh, it's the website up there i found it uh, much easier to use it was probably better value because it was a bit wider uh, than one than the one to the left but uh, yeah, I found it very easy to use and a lot easier to control with the narrower strips. So having measured the, the length that I needed, I then went and chopped them up into smaller pieces and began applying the bandage. Now, you have to be fairly careful in as much that you get this stuff slapping together and it's almost virtually impossible to pull apart. But in the meantime, if you use small enough pieces, you can control it. So it's a case of trying to get it into the shape, 
first. Uh, make sure it has about, I think it's about 10 seconds that you need to immerse it in the water to activate the plaster. And then you just keep working on it. Um, as you can see, this last bit just got a bit of a tail there to try and pull that out. Uh, you just have to keep working and pulling and moving it around. Once it's on there, you've got a few minutes to, to actually work it through. And it's a case of just keep rubbing your finger with a bit of water on it uh, to try and get as much of the, the plaster activated because this then becomes the skin on which you, you later work. You can now also see the benefit of why I use the laminated road bed because having been laminated it is fully protected so anything that I'm putting on here can just be wiped off at a later date. Uh, just a, a side benefit of one of my processes. So you just keep this process going, um, filling little holes that you need or emphasising a particular area and we just keep going through to the end. So having made the ridge now up the top, uh, we laid the roadbed down and started doing the cliff face. Once again, same process, small strips, bring it down, let it sort of form into the shape of the paper underneath. Don't worry about creases and that because the bandage will just sort of fall into place. Uh, you can start moulding a bit as well if you, you like the contours of something. So you just blend the top, bend it over underneath uh, and that will seal, seal the bottom part for you. Quite an easy process. It's quite, um, I was going to say restful, uh, but it's a case of it's enjoyable doing it is what I'm saying you can create something if you're not a creative person this is as about as creative as it gets seeing something that you, you're slapping together and bang ah oh, gee that doesn't look too bad so we'll just watch this going through now for a few minutes So there we have it, one random cliff face with no edge exactly the same. Quite pleased with this, uh, as you can see with the sunlight on it, there's uh, a lot of crevices and things that have popped up and it's got potential for later on for when we do the painting to bring out some of those crevices and the little nooks and valleys in it. I thought I'd like to add a bit of interest and I actually, when I made the track up top, put a kink in it as though there was an object in the way. Uh, the old story, it sounded like a good idea at the time, so I thought I'd just put a, like a little outcrop in the middle of the road. It was a similar sort of process. Uh, the only problem was, later on, and I'll tell you now, some of the vehicles kept hitting it on the inside, so I had to chop out bits at the back. It was just that little bit too too wide. But similar sort of process, you just make something rough, 
uh, stick it down, secure it so it's not going anywhere, and then just continue to layer it with your bandages. Next up in the process was the backboard for the roadway, so exactly the same process, brown paper stuck onto the, the board and covering in the plaster. stage of the messy outdoor operation was to create a plaster slurry which I also uh, tinted with some paints just as a base color to just fill in all the little gaps because the plaster bandage doesn't cover everything so this is a case of just putting a another film um, over the top one thing I didn't do and I should have done was to give it a good wetting uh, to start with to help it adhere. Uh, it's not so bad on this part but on other parts uh, it has flaked off so I should have given the, the plaster a good spray because it basically dried as it hit and I suppose 90% of the place uh, it stuck well but uh, it could have done with uh, a bit more uh, moisture to, to help it penetrate. So all this is doing is just smoothing out the surface. Once again you can use this time for a bit of um, casting, moulding of, of any particular feature you want but basically it's just there to try and fill the gaps and uh, yeah, that's the job. But as I said it dried very fast um, because it, it just the plaster underneath just sucked the moisture straight out so a bit of moistening of the, of the plaster bandage wouldn't have gone astray. So there you have it the finished rock face with a bit of a rough finish not much left <laughs> that worked out well and uh, yeah we're ready for the next stage so I hope you enjoyed this little bit of preparing a cliff face using brown paper and uh, plaster strips. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments and uh, tell me what you think. So we then get ready for Crater Lake number seven, which is getting the railway line prepared for a similar sort of casting of the plaster. Catch you then. Thanks for listening. Oh, thanks for watching, but also putting up with my monotone voice. See you then. Bye.